Hello and welcome to another news of Formula 1 just after the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix I need to close the door studio door now let's have a look at the standings and see what, what they were so Hamilton he won of course and he's in first place followed by Alonso Button, Weber, Massa, Rosberg, Schumacher, Satil, Deresta, Kobayashi and many many more and the people who did not c complete the race were Ricardo he stopped on the 52nd lap and then we have Remy who um, of course slowed down and he had a problem I don't know what it was but we just saw him slowing down there he was doing really well in 7th place but oh dear, bad times for Toro Rosso and then we have Ambrosio, I don't know why, but he went to the pit and he never returned back out through the tunnel. And then we have, of course, Sebastian Vettel with his puncture. And we're going to talk more about Sebastian Vettel because, of course, he was doing so well in the race. And then he just, just his tyre just went. And I feel so ashamed for that because I thought he would have a really good race. Um, and, you know, because it, it, no one ever... Oh, and no one ever else has won the Grand Prix except for Sebastian Vettel. And now, of course, there's two people now. Him, who, who has um, won twice. And, of course, Lewis Hamilton, who has won this year. And um, I'm just gonna take, we're just going to take a look at the standings now. Um, Sebastian Vettel leads by 374 points, the same as it, as it was as we left him in as we left it in India. Then we have Jensen Button with 255 points. Then we have Fernando Alonso with 245. And then Mark Webber with 233. Before in this race had a really weird strategy. He went for three. He, he went for three pit stop. Um, he went for for three pit stop um, plan, and then of course on the third pit stop he had to go on the last lap. So that's a bit weird for Mark Webber, um, and of course that cost him a podium finish of third place. So then we have Lewis Ham. So that so he finishes off with two hundred thirty three points. Then we have Lewis Hamilton who is in um, who still hasn't caught up with the group yet with two hundred twenty seven group um, points. Can he catch up with this group? It will be a very interesting race in Brazil indeed. Then we have Felipe Massa with one hundred eight points. He's just got into the hundreds last time he had ninety eight points. Then we've got a stunning start from the Mercedes again, and it's a sixth and seventh um, grid. Um, um, a lovely position there. Of course, last time out. In India, um, they were fifth and sixth. So yeah, they seem to be really good now, staying there, maintaining their level, and trying to get back to what they were last time. And then of course, so Ros so Nico Rosberg in seventh with 83 points, and Michael Schumacher trying to closely follow him behind uh, with eight. And then we have um, Petro with 36 points, of course, and Heidfeld in 34, who unfortunately isn't in Grand Prix racing anymore. And, of course, he spent a long time in Formula 1 racing. So, yeah, we're just going to say, yeah, good luck in the future. And, of course, so 11th is Satil with 34 points. Going to catch up with Heidfeld. Will this be the time when he actually gets into the top 10 list? This will be an exciting battle. Then in 12th we've got Kobayashi with 28 points and in 13th Al Jaswari with 26 points as we said last time on F1 News he was like down here and then suddenly he gained his place but now he's going down a bit of course um, every driver has a has a bad race and that was for Sebastian Vettel as well and Al Jaswari and of course Toro Rosso had a bad race for example last time in India um, the, Sa the Sauber had a really rubbish race, really, only one point. But Toro Rosso had a really good race on, on, the, um, on this, um, Brimi's, um, um engine um, blew up and stuff. So, yeah, so ups and downs for the teams of Sauber and Toro Rosso. It'll be exciting to see if there's only one point in it. Then we have Paul De Reste with 23 points. He's doing quite well now. He's gone down, he's gone... You know, he had ten, he had two points, and then he didn't score until Hungary. And finally, when he scored it, he seems to be really good. His best result in Singapore was eight points. Then we have Sebastian Buemi. He's retired from the last two races, unfortunately. So he remains in 15th with 15 points. And then we have Perez, who's, which is in 16th with 14 points. He's had quite an up-and-down season. His best result in Silverstone... Um, in the UK with um, in with seventh place. 
Then we have Rubens Barrichello in his Williams for four points in 17th. And then 18th, Bruno Senna with his two points as he finished ninth in the Italian Grand Prix after the big huge collisions. I think it was nine people out of the race. And then we have in last place 19th, Maldonado with one point. So that's how the standings are. Here are the constructors. Red Bull with 607 points. McLaren with 482 points. Ferrari in third with five, 352 points. I hope they fix out, fix um, the broken wing. Then we have Mercedes with 159. Then Renault with 72. Then Force India with 57. Selva with 42, and Toro Rosso with 41. Wow, that's going to be a really exciting battle for sixth place. Let's see if um, Brazil will hold much opportunity. I mean, from eight to six, there's a lot of millions in there. Millions and millions, nearly billions of pounds, actually. Then we have Williams with five points, Lotus with zero, HRT with zero, and Virgin with zero. So, yeah. So, so that's how it stands then, I guess. So let's hope that Lewis Hamilton can catch up. Um, and also, Mark Webber, let's see if he can win at least one Grand Prix. Please, Mark Webber, we want to see better than, than you. Now, I'm just going to see um, what would have happened if things didn't turn out this way. So, for example, I'm going to show you. So, Sebastian Buemi. Sebastian Buemi. He was brilliant. He, he, so he had 15 points, of course, and we're going to add on 6 because he would have come 7th, 21, he would have easily come up fairly good, I'll just worry if he would have just a better qualifying result and just, you know, had 4 points on it, he could have been, right, he could have gone up 1 pace, so that's brilliant. So that could have, oh, that could have really good and done really well for Toro Rosso. Let's see how much it would have been. So add eight or oh, forty-nine. There would have been just about yeah, there. So let's see. That will be an interesting battle. Join me next time with Formula One news um, after the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix race, and we'll see highlight. Uh, we're going to see an analysis and see if we can actually find out what caused Vettel's puncture. Stay tuned for part three.